Hey everyone, do I have an amazing gem of a model for you today. This is not like a normal flux model though. This is really, really cool. It's called Chroma. We're going to get into how it's different, some of the legal implications of it. By the way, it's good. A walkthrough of an amazing new workflow that I put together to get this going very, very quickly. Also, we're going to be talking about generating photorealistic landscapes. Aren't you tired of those generic stock photos? You're going to be able to create your own breathtaking landscapes yourself, making it easy, easy, easy to create custom photorealistic scenery. Plus, as a bonus, we're going to go into gradients a little further, both integrated now into this new Chroma workflow, as well as the standard flux loader. Thank you again so much for all of your amazing comments and feedback. Keep them coming. I love all of your new video ideas, so please feel free to keep on commenting on the videos. Also, thank you so much for those who have signed up for a channel membership. And for those that want to, it's very easy and very, very much appreciated. All right, you guys excited? Let's get to it. Okay, jumping right in, how is it different? The images that are coming out of Chroma are phenomenal. They're near the top of the leaderboard fine-tune models, but I find that there's a lot of additional flexibility in the output that you'll see really comes out, and we're going to talk more about that as we're starting to get into examples. Also, performance-wise, I was actually a little bit worried. When I first started playing with Chroma, it was roughly 40 to 60 steps. It would take about a minute, minute and a half on my 4090 to get the you know normal sort of resolution images, that was really a deal breaker. I did find, however, some interesting techniques that have really got it down to exactly the same speed that I have on my Flux fine tune models. So we're talking about, give or take about 13 or 14 seconds for a normal resolution image. And we'll talk more about how that actually plays out. Finally, the querying technique is very different. So usually with a regular fine tune model, you're doing a dual load of a clip you're doing not only the clip L, but also like one of the text-based clips, right? like the T5s, et cetera. And actually for Chroma, you only need the T5 by itself, which actually begs the question, you know, how does it actually query if it's not trying to pull out imagery specifically using that clip L? So as we get into the actual workflow, you'll see something interesting about that. Okay, so then the big question is, what about legal considerations? So actually, the nice thing about Chroma is that it's under Schnell in terms of its base configuration, which means that it falls under the Apache licenses, and therefore you can use this model completely free and used for commercial purposes. You know, a lot of people use the Flux dev models right now for commercial purposes, and they're a little bit at risk, honestly, because technically you should be buying licenses with Black Forest Labs if you're going to use the dev or pro models. So just to be careful, I think once you see the output of Chroma, you may actually switch uh, from your fine tunes. Uh, and we actually have some interesting hybrid situations as well. Okay, so let's actually go through a walkthrough of this new flow. Okay, so there's a lot going on here, but you'll see that it's actually organized in a pretty straightforward, logical way. On the left-hand side, we have a loader area, which we're gonna talk about how we're loading the models. Then we have an optimizer area where we're actually setting up kind of your latent space, your canvases of sorts. You're doing your prompting. You're doing some sampling. You can see triple sampling, and we'll talk through why we're doing that because it sounds crazy. Of course, we have our noise area, which we talked about during the last video. And finally, we have our flux finishers, which is uh, optional, and we'll talk about the implications of doing that. All right, so jumping right in, you can see we basically have a new Chroma model. So this is a normal uh, diffuser loader node, but it is a new model. So I'm gonna include a link to these models in the description as always, because there's more and more of these versions coming out since it's only about 50% trained and it's already really, really amazing. So we have the initial model. Again, like I said before, we're only loading the clip text and you can see that is actually going to this T5 tokenizer options. And basically what it's doing is it's kind of grouping together your prompt words in groups. And I've done a little bit of testing. I found that between zero and two is the best. That's basically saying within a two word grouping, you should be able to get you know main subjects as you're kind of pulling through your concepts uh, through your prompt. 
Uh, you can see down below, I do have the dev flux models. I'm using Project Zero Real, and I will talk about why. And you'll see that I am loading the VAE for uh, flux because at the end of the day, Chroma is a flux model. So the nice thing is whether you are flipping between uh, Chroma or any of the flux dev fine tunes, uh, it's using the same VAE. Okay, so the resolution is all the same. Power Lore is the same. By the way, good news. I found that the Loras for uh, Flux Dev work in this case as well. Uh, sometimes with a little bit of different results, so you'll have to play with it and play with the strengths a little bit. But generally speaking, it's very good. Uh, you'll also see I'm doing some sharpening, some latent sharpening. And so the question is, well, why? So that begs the bigger question of the strategy. So to get the speed down for these renders, I'm basically doing almost like a frame up type of situation. We're starting with very, very small latents, right? In fact, divided by three. So, you know, 896 by 1152 divided by three. So very, very tiny. We're doing some initial renders there. And then we're then gonna sharpen it up and then upscale it to the end resolution. So the end resolution will be 896 by 1152 or, you know, any of these other sort of big image resolutions. But the nice thing about it is because you're starting very, very small and Chroma does very well in adherence very small, it then can scale up very quickly and you don't need as many steps at that very, very big resolution state. And that's where you get all of your speed boosts. Additionally, there is a hyper uh, Chroma accelerator, LoRa, almost like the hyper dev that we've been using on the flux dev side. And so I've included that too. I found that it does help a little bit. Uh, it's not game changer like the uh, one for flux dev, but it's pretty good. So I definitely recommend getting that. And again, we'll have links uh, available for people. And so you can see we're basically sharpening that latent and we'll show you kind of the steps around that. And then doing some resize imagery. You can see there's a few different kinds of decodes, you know, based on what level of sampler we're doing. Again, we're doing three different sampler steps. Okay, so the prompt itself is like any other prompt. However, because this is a, almost like a natural engine, a pure text engine sort of querying that you're doing for your prompts, you can talk as you normally would about what you want. And so the normal priorities that you would put into your prompts, things like the subjects, some descriptive of the subjects, I usually put them in parentheses, you know, what actions are they doing or what props are they holding? You know, what is the background? What's the camera angle? Is there a particular style? All these different elements you'll want to include. You don't have to do it in any sort of special format. You can actually do it in a very natural language type way. Uh, additionally, you see gradients. So we'll talk about how to incorporate the gradients in there. And you can also see there's actually information in the negative. And one of the positives of Chroma is that it does follow a negative. So you can put in negative prompts and it will in fact help your imagery out quite a bit. Uh, where, you know, Flux Dev, it doesn't really listen to your negative prompts at all. Okay, so onto the actual sampling. We have three different levels, right? Three stages. First one, almost like we do the two stage uh, sampling with our Flux Dev. So five steps is lightning quick, right? Because it's very, very, very tiny resolution for your latent. So it's going five steps. The CFG I found, by the way, four is kind of like the sweet spot. Uh, you can have it down to three, you could have it at six, even jump it up to 10 if you want. Uh, it does burn out though at some point uh, on both ends. So, you know, it's something to play with, but four seems to be kind of uh, the natural, you know, midpoint here where let's say one is the midpoint for uh, flux step. Uh, jumps into, you know, the second uh, sampling step. Like I said, there's a little bit of latent sharpening beforehand because now we're going to really do most of our rendering here, right? 15 steps. Again, we're starting at four. You can play with that uh, up or down. And just like we have on our normal flux dev loader, we're starting at step two, right? Not starting at the beginning because we're kind of getting it from the, over here and going to step 15, 15 steps total. You can also go to 10 steps at the top, especially when you're doing things around text. As a caveat, I did find that the text quality of Flux Dev seems to be a little crisper uh, than Chroma. However, the styling of text is significantly better in Chroma. So we have some strategies around that. Basically, you could take this, pop it in for you know a finalization step uh, as an image to image in Flux Dev, and that can really clean things up a little bit. And so we're only having to do 
high resolution or call it main resolution rendering for only about seven steps. And I did kick up the CFG a little bit here again, you can play with it. And you can see this final step is almost like the polisher, right? It's kind of bringing the uh, end resolution up and polishing those kind of in-between spots. So really only about five steps here. And similarly to our flux loader, we have the ability to swap out the standard noise with the kind of boosted noise, any of those kinds of noises that we'll talk about. And like we said before, we're gonna have a different video specifically talking about noise type. But again, you can just basically pop it into here, whatever type of noise you wanna use, and then flip it over to this boosted noise uh, option, and it'll work great. Okay, and last but not least, before we get to the flux side, I do have basically a couple of step routines for uh, additional skin enhancement and face enhancement. Uh, skin texture is pretty good. Uh, don't get me wrong. It's definitely, definitely better than uh, Flux Schnell when it first came out. But at the same time, uh, we are applying a very light sort of skin texture upscale. It's a very, very quick process. And additionally, optionally, and I have this bypassed, but you can unbypass it if you want, uh, a face detailer. So when you have that all in place, the end imagery is fantastic. Now, if you want to take it to the final next step level, of course, you could do an SD upscale, or you can do a couple of additional things on the flux step side. Now, note that this is going to be a, a speed uh, decrease if you jump between chroma and then a flux dev model. In this case, I'm doing Project Zero. If you use Colossus or Slipner or you know any of the other models, the really good jib, right? Any of the other good models out there. So that's gonna slow your speed down quite a bit. So you know, I'd use this in places where you are doing a final polishing effect, but we have basically two different options. One is if you need to just fix the faces in a high quality way. Let's say the skin looks fine. The, you know, posing looks great. You know, there's not much text. Maybe there's a single word or two on a on a label or a, a you know sign or something like that. You know, no big deal. Then in that case, you may just want to do the face. It's going to be much quicker than doing a full image to image. And you can see, you can basically mask your face or faces, bring it into the, the dilate mask here. It's going to blur it a little bit. And then it'll do basically a face detailer. Right, and you can see it's only about eight steps. You could go seven steps, figure uh, which number of steps you want, and also that denoise level as well. Um, I find that eight steps at a 70% denoise works great, uh, but you can again figure out what's gonna be best for you. Additionally, you can you know add LORAs as you normally would in your flux world, and a simple description, right? What expression, if it's a female face, a young face, an old face, etc. cetera. Uh, that's what you would include here, and then it'll I'll put that. Now, if you need to do a full uh, image to image, you can do that as well. And same sort of deal. But you're going to basically do a full uh, finisher with, again, whichever flux model you're loading up. And it will then, you know, do that. Now, I highly recommend not to do a lot of steps here. So the more steps that you include in this final polisher stage, obviously, it's going to start to morph your image closer to your flux dev model which is not necessarily a bad thing, but a lot of the power and creativity of what this Chroma model does, uh, does so much better than what the Flux Dev model does. So I would keep this really, really low. You know, only two, three, maybe four steps. If you're doing a lot of text, maybe five. Think of it like it's putting on the final touches for your image. Okay, great. So let's do a quick example here. Okay, and there we go. And you can see it did an excellent job of getting every single detail locked in from the prompt. Really, really excellent. Again, I don't even have to really even touch the faces that much, but if I wanted to, again, I could just unblock. Okay, great. So this is great. Now, if I wanted to include my gradients here, of course, just like we had in the loader example, I can go and mess with my gradient here that's now integrated into my workflow already. And let's say this is actually a really good color scheme already. So I'm going to do it this way. So we basically have a dark sky and kind of a blue highlight here. Okay, I'm gonna just re-render. Okay, and I'm gonna now add my blend factor. So if I keep it at one, it basically ignores this. And so 
I'm going to have about a 50% and I'm going to also multiply it to make it a little bit darker since it's a dark scene and we'll let it go. Sometimes I'll use overlay and sometimes I'll use normal. It really depends. You can see how quick it is that Chroma can just re-render the scene. Okay, and there we go. So again, it's very, very powerful to get, you know, both the coloring and the creativity that you want to get into your imagery very, very simply through this Chroma workflow. And finally, to show you what it would be like with the Flux uh, edition on here, right? And I think in this case, just especially look at the skin texture differences. We'll do a, a quick comparison. Add this and go. Okay, great. So it's done. So let's take a quick peek at the before and after. So you can see it's doing some pretty significant work here. Only a few steps, but the face uh, structure is better. And let's look at the skin quality as well, right? This is using Project Zero Realism. And you can see, obviously, the skin quality is a little better as well. So, you know, it's something to play with uh, definitely a bit, but the quality is just fantastic. Really, really phenomenal. You get the boost from Chroma in terms of the flexibility in your image and the adherence in your image. And then again, if you need any sort of final polishing, you could use a flex dev model. But honestly, for most of the time, you may not even need that. So just something to keep in mind. Okay, so next, let's talk about our photorealistic landscapes. So like I said in the intro, many times you'll want to create your own uh, landscapes. And that's going to save you a whole ton of time, especially if you're used to getting uh, stock photography you know, from the stock photography sites. You really can do this all on your own now uh, with very little effort. So now using our new Chroma Flow, how we do this, you'll want to set the resolution for your landscape for whatever your particular needs might be, right? In this case, maybe it's an 1152 by 96, or let's say it's even further, like a 1344 by uh, 768. That's a pretty standard, you know, 16 by nine uh, definition. And, you know, same way we did before, we'll want to add a, a description. So in this case, let's say we want an Arizona desert, Okay, great. And again, as before, we want to, you know, reset to not include the gradient. In this case, you can just set it back to one with normal. And as you can see, it fulfills all the details that you needed. Now, of course, you can just like we did with Flux, add it in to do any final polishing. You can also include your gradient as well here, right? So if I want it to be a, you know, orange red sort of background since it's in the desert, I might want to have, you know, kind of a dusty yellow and a kind of a deep, call it a deep red to have sort of that sort of flavor here. And great. And you might also want to, you know, reduce the number of steps total to really get that sort of flow in place. Okay, and you can see right away, you can see the gradient totally affected the end result. And it's very, very nice. Again, you can play with it quite a bit. You you can you know paint and uh, you can also paint your latent. You know if you want to include specific elements and feed it into your Chroma two layer here, uh, your Chroma two stage here, and uh, that will also influence that end imagery as well. So lots of lots of different creative options for you, and you can see finally, and I'll include this of course linked in the description. And again, it works the same exact way. Okay, so again, thank you so much for liking and sharing and subscribing. I really appreciate all the great feedback that you guys are providing. Uh, love all your new ideas for videos for the future. Please keep them coming. Please let others know about the channel. And otherwise, we'll talk to you soon.